Welcome back to Act 2 of Old Week, where we are reviewing the movie Old by M. Night Shyamalan. But Dane, what do our viewers need to do right now? They need to know that subscriptions are utterly important to our oh, livelihood. So important. So, when you come up and watch our video, there's a little red button just to on your camera over just down here. Press the button so it goes gray. Subscribe, please. Yeah, and this is the week of Christmas. If you want to spread a little Christmas, Christmas cheer giving. to us, <laughs> like the video and subscribe, and then go find us on social media and follow us. That, right. that would make our Christmas. We could be your white elephant. Pass us around the room. Everyone could be subscribing to us, and then finally somebody will win this special Blu-ray edition if they comment by what date. December the 26th. Ah, Christmas Day. You have nothing better the to do. The 26th after. is the is day it? after Christmas. Oh, yeah, right. Well, you have <laughs> nothing to do anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> the shopping is done. Comment on our... Presents are ripped all over the place. Yes. You know, all your socks are thrown over your shoulders. And yep. you've taken out your Red Rider BB gun and already shot yourself the in the eye. The eggnog is gone. Use your other eye to press the subscription and comment. Because you will win this movie by that date. Which All is right. what date? The 26th. <laughs> so, Dane, there is one other shout-out I'd like to make. Yeah. Fred from The Burning Leaf. The Burning Leaf. In Naperville, Illinois, Fox Valley Mall. Awesome guy, awesome place. Uh, gave us these cigar boxes. Gifted. S gifted them to us. Because he knows we like the skull. Because we've gone in a few times to share a cigar with each other. He is the... He's the most awesome guy. I know. Isn't he? Here's a death moss. Kind of looked like, what's up here? Death yeah. skull moss. Yeah. Moss. So we went in uh, the other evening and we're talking with him. And guess what? He he was talking, we were talking a little bit about our show because he was asking about it. I had a prior uh, uh, time that we went in. We told him that we were about to start a show. Mm -hmm. This time we told him about the show and... So uh, he, he, he hooked us up with some really cool cigar boxes. We might have to go film there sometime. We, we want to <laughs> film there. I, I think Fred would let us, actually. Yeah, he think? would. <laughs> yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's so a cool guy. Thank you, Fred. We are going to link his website uh, in our description. So if you go to the YouTube description, uh, you'll find uh, a link to Burning Leaf in Naperville, Illinois. Yep. It's right in the Fox Valley Mall uh, Love area. The smell so. of old cigar boxes. Oh yeah. So thank you, Fred. So um, well, let me before we move on. Yeah. Shouldn't I be pouring some more of this? Well, you could. Red rolled vine Zinfandel. You could. That's the drink of the week. But <laughs> yeah. But Dane, I actually bought you a present for well, Christmas. Really? Oh yeah. I didn't get you anything. I didn't I know, know we were exchanging. I kind of figured. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> so here's here's what I got us. While I was in the, uh, you know, we always say the LCS is the local comic shop. The yeah. LCS. I guess LLS would be the local liquor store. <laughs> so when I was in my LLS, my local liquor store. LLS. I saw these and said, we have got to try these out. These are called Buzzball Chillers. Buzzball Chillers. And they are eggnogs. Little, egg, little cups of eggnog with 15% alcohol content. <laughs> and I'm trying to think what they kind of look like little milk grenades. Says Are you shake well. To shake them? Says shake well. Does it shake well. Like shake this? weight. Shake weight. Uh, ooh, 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 lost ooh. about two pounds right there. Says woman. Women owned. Oh, nice. Women owned. Have a ball. Shake Buzz well. ball chillers. And do you, Where are all, these women from, by the way? Do you like? Do you We're like gonna have to cite them if these are really tasty. We'll yeah. tell you in about five minutes. We'll tell you in a, a second if these are really good or not. Buzzball LLC, Texas. Texas. Now let me ask you: Are you a fan of eggnog? I am. Oh, I love eggnog. But it has to be a really like thick eggnog. I like and thick. And then you dump some nice rum in there. Oh, I like brandy in it, but. This does not look very thick as we were shaking this, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe shaking it makes it thicker. It looks pretty runny. Like, yeah, it does. It yeah, does yeah. seem like it's just yeah. not like uh, thickening. Yeah, we need to get this thick. <laughs> so, uh, it's not as brown, you know, or tannish. You know, it's this is very white. No, that's fine with me. It Buzz just has to taste killer. good. I'm just trying to figure right. out what kind of alcohol it has in it. 
It says uh, standard orange wine. Wine? With natural flavors. I don't. I, we'll see what happens. I don't here. have it says, the highest other expectations. Than standard orange wine with natural flavors, fifteen percent alcohol. And it opens. It looks like a can, like a Coke like a can. Coke can. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That, it is like deceptive. If you look at that, it looks like a Coke can, doesn't it? All right, let's try All this right, out. Hold on, I gotta pop mine too. Yep. Cheers. Pop my ball. All right. Buzz. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Buzz balls. Well, Chillers. I will say it's actually surprisingly pretty tasty. It's not that bad, actually. I I want it thicker. I want it thicker. I like it thick. You like it thick? Mm -hmm. I like it thick. Yeah. But uh, that's thick still and Thor. <laughs> that still tastes pretty good, though, doesn't it? It does. I will say it's it's got a little bit of spiciness to it too. I don't know. I guess it's the alcohol. There is a it. there is an alcoholic kick to that, though. Yeah. Uh, it's basically like half alcohol and then like eggnog. Because, you know, sometimes the eggnog that I mix, you can't really taste the alcohol. And so, bam, it's like one of those silent, deadly drinks. You uh, know what I mean? And, but this, you can you can taste the alcohol. And maybe that's the shaking. You know, you really got to mix it because it's settled. And I don't know. But I think we case, shook it pretty good. It's tasty. We shook it like it owed us money there. So, um we will give Buzz Balls a thumbs up. I will give Buzz Balls a thumbs up. And by the way, there was about six other flavors there there was like a green oh. apple wine there was like a like oh, a this is just cherry oh. but this was the this was the holiday eggnog one so right well i i will say the flavor is good the flavor is interesting you can just pop it i kind of think maybe they could have done a little better job with the packaging you know like are you going to be eat, drinking this all year long or was this just for the christmas season you know because well it, it looks like an ornament yeah. Like a Christmas ornament. Right. But but they had Then some, what are they going to do in J July? <laughs> they have the green apple. They uh, have like mango. Oh, this is especially made just for Christmas. This okay. is especially made for Christmas. All right. So. Well, we'll sip on this fine beverage. I'm going to look into who owns Buzz Balls and contact them and say... It says have a bulb on the side. Good product. We'll let you know by the end of this. These... Uh, yeah, if we look buzzed out of our balls in a few minutes, you know it was the buzz balls working, okay? <laughs> so, Dane, today we are uh, going to review the movie Old, um, but this happens to be that time of year when we all have Christmas cheer, and every year new Christmas movies keep coming out, but yes. we kind of, you know, Especially watch the some of them. Especially the I think there's oh. like 135. Oh, that came they, out they this come year. out with something like 14 new Christmas movies every year oh on the Hallmark God. Channel. So, um, can't keep up. But that had me ponder what is your top eight Christmas movies? My top eight? Of all time! My Infinity Eight? Infinity Eight. Top eight Christmas movies. I want to know. Uh, we all want to know. What Starting is your, with number 17. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is your number eight Christmas movie? I had a lot time? of honorable mentions. In oh, do you? Okay. Yes, but I guess we're not doing that. Not doing it. You always get mad at me if I do that. I will say I'm going to give a number nine, Bad Santa. But my number eight is National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. Number eight. All number the way eight. down there. National Lampoon, Chevy Chase. Beverly I mean, D'Angelo. I bet they had no idea that movie would be replayed as much as it was. They made it for a very short amount of time. And I kind of think they it were It became hoping. a Christmas tradition in a lot of ways, right? Man, you're eating all the nuts real fast here. I know. Well, I can't Got a little snack of uh, mixed nuts. Balls and nuts. And you buzz know? balls. You can't do any better, worse than that. Yeah. Or better than that. So I think they were hoping it would be a Christmas classic when they made it. You think so? Yeah. I think if you are making any sort of Christmas movie, you're hoping it would be in the rotation of Christmas. Well, classics. I guess. I, know. I mean, the whole thing about him getting his bonus and not getting it. Like, who gets bonuses anymore? I mean, that that's so old school. Right? I mean. <laughs> no, there's bonuses still to be had. Not the Christmas bonus, though. No, there is. Believe me. Yeah. All right. I guess I'm in the wrong industry. You Mr. Are. Moneybags over here gets his bonus every Christmas. No, no I, my, I don't get a Christmas bonus, but I have been at companies that gave Christmas bonuses. Okay. Never have I ever experienced that. What's your number eight? It's a Wonderful Life. And that's your number eight. Okay. That's my number eight. So yeah, that's a fabulous it, it, movie. It's, it's probably the number one talked about Christmas uh -huh. movie of all time. Um, it is good, but to watch it year after year... You know, I don't know. I mean, I watch it every few years or whatever. Well, but the amazing thing, it was on every year from no, ever I know. there. 
I because know. they lost the copyright or something happened with it, and then somebody got the copyright back, and then all of a sudden it's only played like once. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know if you noticed that. <coughs> it's just on all the time. No. But that is a great movie. I mean, you it know, is a good so movie. many like weird historical things that happen in that. I mean, did you know Alfalfa is in that movie? No. You know who Alfalfa is? Yeah, from the Little Rascals. Exactly. So do you remember when he says he's showing? Uh, this is pre like the whole you know actual main part of the movie where he shows like yeah and look at my brother and then there's this guy's like huh like oh. this very dorky looking brother. That's that actor. That's oh. Alfalfa, my brother back from the thing. Oh my gosh. That's his entire thing in the movie. But there's so it's many. It's an awesome message, though, because oh, yeah. it's all about like when you think that your life is not going great and you don't think you're that important, you don't realize how important you are to other people in this world. Yeah. And that you need to recognize, you know, how important you are to other people. And so it's just, it's a good movie. Love right. it. You know, watch it every few years. Uh, for Christmas, but it makes my number eight. And, and what's and and, I, and and it's my number seven, by the way. So oh, I'm so gonna, we're going to go right I'm into just your number seven. Jump right into okay. it. Okay, we'll continue this discussion. Okay. But the, uh, uh, the 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 thing that's interesting about that movie too is because we, we all associate the Christmas part of it, but there's so much of that movie that occurs that is completely not Christmas mm -hmm. related. But uh, going back to the historical thing, do you remember with the pool? That giant pool where they're in the dance hall and the pool and the and then the floor is moving. Yeah, I and mean, that was super advanced technology yeah. back in like what 1952. Yeah, that was happening. They make references to uh, you know there's I mean there's all these like subtextual references to uh, like societal issues with. I like where, subtext. Yeah, yeah, you know with the the kid when uh, he loses his hearing because oh. the old man uh, poisons the kid. I mean, mm -hmm. there's all these like things that happen in that never got any airplay. Oh yeah. Everyone always sees the end with, what's the wife's name? He's running down the thing. Hey! Oh yeah. Hey! And then he runs it was a good in, movie. and then yeah, I mean it was a great movie. So yeah. overall. That movie should really is going to be always etched in history. Oh yeah, it will be played forever, forever. So forever. You're not drinking enough of your Buzz Ball. Uh, by uh, the way. Oh, I was so, talking. I know. I, we switched. All right. So, so what's your number seven? My number seven. And I'm going to combine here, like what you hate. Cheater. But I'm going to combine Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town because they always play those back to back. You know, those little claymation animation things. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I was just okay. thinking, is that your thin veil of cheating? Is that you can say they play back to back? No. Uh, <laughs> well, they always They're play back great. to back. They always play them back to yeah. back. And I, you know what? Even as an adult, I remember when I, I was a we kid. Had candy canes. Yeah, that would be cool. Candy corn. Candy corn. Oh, that's more Halloween. But, um. Oh, the, the wizard. Oh, okay. So anyways, uh, every year as a kid, when they would play these, you know, every Christmas, I just loved them. And I loved that claymation kind of stop motion animation. I yeah. used to love that as a kid. And so even today as an adult, every time those come on, I, I feel like a little bit of my childhood is reinstalled right. and I get to watch those. And, except technically, they're not claymation. They were actually uh, puppets. Puppets, yeah. Movable puppets with arms. And, it, and I think I'm using the word claymation in a, as more for the stop motion. Stop motion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. But, no, but yeah. they're fabulous. And, and I agree with you. There's always a great message. As kids, we love those things. I mean, you would, you know, of course, this is before all you youngsters, you millenniums. Millenniums, yeah. Millennials. Yeah. You millennials really, with your DVRs and your ways to go back and watch something immediately after it plays. Those days, you were looking for the day when that show was coming out and, and the if TV you missed, died, and if, and if you, you missed, missed it, it you had to wait another year for uh -huh. that to see that so you were like planted in front of that TV I'm winning do not talk to me shut off all my you know yeah these these millenniums or millennials as you know <laughs> they they don't understand what the TV guide meant to us back then to right. plan out your week of TV I mean, we used to do that as a kid. I mean, we, we right. subscribed, and my parents would get it, and I'd be the first one to go grab it, and I would mark through the TV guy, like, oh, oh yeah. I want to see that, I want to see that. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you knew, you knew there was some good TV coming. It was yeah. all anticipation. So, right, I, we're I back actually kind of miss right? those days, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, well, it's true. I mean, right. nowadays, you, you can literally, like, skip something, well, as we've already talked, for an entire year before you watch it. Yeah. So, yeah. what are we on? Number six. 
For me, it's Joyeux Noël. Oh. I bet you won't know this. Well, first of all, you're going into your French background to say Joyeux Noël. It is Joyeux, and it's ironically a French movie. Okay. But it's no, about this. World War I. The Germans and the French, after having this bloody trench war for oh. how many years, on Christmas Eve, and I think it's 1918. World War I. World War I. They both agree... Both sides who were, you know, in, the, in those days, the trench wars were literally, you were 10 feet from each other. And people were like, bam, bam, bam. You saw a little bit of it in Wonder Woman. But, 1917. Uh, they, Go watch that movie. Yeah, they, a great movie. But they, um, they both agreed to have a, for Christmas Day, no one would shoot anybody. And right. they all came out and celebrated Christmas together. Wow. And so it's an actually amazing movie because yeah. you really... The, the, this particular, they did a great job with it. This is based on a true story. It's too. a true story, yeah. yeah, and everything. And so, highly recommend it. I mean, you know, obviously, subtitles, because it's a French movie. But uh, it's just such a great example of the Christmas spirit and what it can do, even in the middle of war. Yeah, and then the next day, I'm going to kill you. It, well, that's exactly what ended up happening. Yeah. I mean, they stopped. The movie was great, uh, you know, in the sense that they showed what was going on beforehand. And then they stopped for a day. They, I mean, it was literally Germans and French people out there dancing around and blah, blah, blah. I mean, was, I'm skipping a lot, obviously. And then it all reluctantly went back to the way it was. And they all realized that... So I haven't seen this movie, yeah, but it sounds... Great movie. Like, a, is it in French and subtitled? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. It, maybe maybe there's, you know, over... What do they call that? Dub overs, right. dubs, but I don't know. But great yeah. movie. All right. Go ahead. Number six. For me, is Home Alone. Um, that Kevin. movie sucked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you, probably, you, probably, you might think it sucks now, but like when no. that movie came out in the '90s, and it, it came out at Christmas time, and I remember, you know, taking my special someone to see that movie. We had a blast. Number one, because it was so funny. It wasn't the first time you see it. If you see it over and over, then it. Oh, you, actually, you know. that's the great thing about that movie. You can see it over and over yeah. because there's just so much. Go going on in yeah. details and everything. So it was so funny, but then it had like a kind of a Christmas cheer because the parents are trying to get back to the kid that they mistakenly left, mm -hmm. right? Who's stuck at home alone, and um, but, you know. But meanwhile, because the, of his own, because he did it himself. Well, he, he did it himself. He but, starts out as a naughty kid and then comes to realize I've been a pain in the ass the whole yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good movie, and yeah. um, Joe you know, Pesci at his best. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't know if that was his best. <laughs> you know, Some could I, say. I would go more Goodfellas <laughs> Casino. But, uh, right. But yeah, it was a great movie. Great I movie. love Home Alone. Yep. So, and, and coincidentally, you can stay in the house now. It's a and b They open it up for Airbnb or oh, something. Oh, really? Yeah, it's up uh, in northern suburbs of Chicago I don't know how many, for you people that didn't know that. I don't know how many pans of uh, or cans of paint I can take to the face. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, like I'm the, sure that would be bad for business if yeah. you were really slapping everybody. Okay. So what are we on here? We are on number five. Number five for me is Love Actually. What? <laughs> I thought this would be number one. I thought this was like your all-time favorite. Yeah, I Because you always talk about how you watch, you and your wife watch this like every year for we Christmas. We did, and we just saw a great parody of it. If you ever get a chance, parody of Love Actually. But, you know, it's funny. Wait, is it called Parody of Love? Actually? It is called because, obviously. Is it a movie or like no, a play? No, it's a play. I've okay. been to Chicago. Might make it out to other parts of the United States. Highly recommend it. Hilarious. Okay. Actor, actresses. A lot of it jumping around. And the woman had the actress who can play Kira Knightley. <laughs> Absolutely priceless. Okay. I mean, I'm using athlete a lot. All right. But it must be these buzz balls working. I don't know. These but, buzz uh, balls are working. But you know what? I'll, I'll, for who I'll, have not seen Love Actually, not to interrupt you here. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. No, for, for those who point. have not seen Love Actually, what? Are we allowed to do spoilers or anything like that? No, I don't do um, a spoiler for uh, this. Well, but the, the beauty of the movie is, is it's totally written from a British standpoint because the director and the writer and everyone is Britain. So it's all these different stories. So it's stories. very pretentious and, you know. Well, no, because there's actually the other side of Britain, if you guys are Ted Lasso fans, Swearing, nudity, things like that. In Britain, not such a big deal. Right. And well, so there's some great storylines. Obviously, people make, you know, it's one of those like things that are either reviled or loved. I'm more on the love side. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those you can watch every year and it, 
there's just so much going on in it that you never get bored. So go ahead. Just a little note here. I think I've caught 10 minutes of it before. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's missing. And then, like, said, what? And just moved on. Get so. yourself with a special someone, a special honey. And okay. then you can watch it together. That's There's your night, your date night. Okay. On your date. All and right. Sith.com. Esith.com. Esith.com. <laughs> After I choke out some rebel scum. So, uh, all right. So What's yours? Number, number five. I went with A Christmas Story. So this is young Ralphie wanting the the Red Rider gun. Yes, Red Rider BB gun. Yes. <laughs> don't, you know, you'll put an glasses. eye out, right? Uh, yeah. And you know, do you remember like the lamp that the father got with the leg in the like stocking? It's a fabulous prize. Oh, yeah. What did he say? Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> remember, but I bought that exact lamp for my brother. For Christmas, uh, so he's oh, got he one of these. That right here. Oh, the I know. <laughs> he's got that in his house. Every and year he puts it up. I'm no, sure. he keeps it year round. He loves the lamp. He loves the lamp. Where is it up in your brother's house? It's in his office. Oh, okay. So yeah, he's got the lamp up with the leg. <laughs> I hope he does Zoom calls in there with that in the background. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but you no, know, man, that is, and, and, and you, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm assuming it's just such a touch of nostalgia in that yeah. movie. I mean, you know, it was shot in Indiana. There's in like the 80s. In the 80s, but it's taking place in like 1950 something. Okay. Maybe like 54 yes. or something like that, because they were still driving like old Buicks and. And did you know? Do you and, know how bad it did at the box office? No. I was reading a little bit about this. It came out at Christmas time, like in December. It did so bad that they took it out before Christmas even came. Oh my God! And That's then a what happened? And then what happened was in reruns and syndication and stuff like that, it became a classic during the '80s. There's so many things that in reruns becomes like a cult classic, yeah. which of course is our entire mo here. But there's so many movies, TV shows, and I just learned if the Desi Arnaz with uh, Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem. Yeah. Desi Arnaz is the one who came up with the idea of doing reruns. Oh. It never had been done on TV before, and not in, obviously in movies. And he was the one that suggested, well, we need a break here. Let's just replay some of these old I Love Lucy shows, and that was it. Well, wow, that's very interesting. <laughs> off, off topic. Off topic. But very interesting. <laughs> but anyways. So, so let's go to your number four. My number four, Die Hard. Okay. The, I was wondering. Were you, you were wondering gonna... where that was coming from? Because it's Christmas on steroids. So you play a Christmas song. It's now a Christmas movie. Okay. It I... takes place during Christmas. It's an, it, it actually is like an active office party, you know. Like... It's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> but if you want to call somehow, it a Christmas movie. But somehow it shows. It, hey, man, it this is your world. That, it conveys Christmas in it when he's like, yippee ki -yay. Mr. Santa. Yeah, that's very what's you know <laughs> goodwill and joy around the world. Yep, well, that's on a great note, and then you know, and then you've got. So here's the thing, um, uh, Hans Gruber. Yeah. Who also is Snape. Snape. And he's in love, actually. Oh, is that how you're tying it to a Christmas movie? <laughs> there we go. It's like three We're degrees, three movie. degrees to a Christmas movie. But you know, I think the thing is with Christmas movies, especially if you've overdosed on Hallmark Christmas stuff or Netflix is putting out a, a lot of great stuff. It's like the kind of like a palate cleanser. It resets you because you're kind of like I watched Home Alone two. I've just watched National Lampoon. I need somebody killing off terrorists in yeah. a building in L. A. where there's no snow, obviously, but there's a tree in the background. Yeah. So tree in the background, Christmas movie. <laughs> All right. I, I don't. I don't consider it a Christmas movie. A lot of people do. And if you want to call it a Christmas movie, fine. I don't care. It's not my top eight. You know what I mean? So, so what's in your And, and I like four? the movie. That's you the like thing. The I like I the movie. You so. can't fight the, but can't I'm not fight gonna, the lake. I'm not going to call it a Christmas movie. <laughs> what's number four for you? I have a Charlie Brown Christmas. Oh. So I think about that song every year that they play, the symphony. Copyright. Just commenting on it. What's another song in there we can sing like three bars from? Oh, I don't know. That's the one that's um, always on the Christmas channel. Do do do. The one where the the piano. I don't even want. But to that, that you know that know very sad Christmas tree that Snoopy right. puts dance. up. You know what I mean? You yeah. Dance. Uh, how the different dancing was. I mean, just, I don't know if Charles Schultz realized that dancing would make such an impact. On oh people. yeah. So the way he had them all doing like weird. But do you stuff. remember the Christmas tree with like the one ornament that's like yeah. pulling the tree? It just you know it just brings me back to my 
childhood again and you know that was another movie that you had to know yeah, in the tv of, guide what channel right. what when it's gonna be on because you want to watch it so um i love it and it just the song even just <laughs> today when that comes on hits my heart so all right and some limp trees yeah and some limp trees <laughs> So, sounds like a good name for a rock band. But anyway, limp trees. Limp trees. I did it all for the ornaments. All right. Uh, so number three, White Christmas. White. I'm Christmas. going traditional here. I mean, is that uh, the um, Bing, Bing Crosby, Crosby? Yeah. And uh, uh, George Clooney's. What's her? His a Rosemary Clooney. Rosemary Clooney. Clooney and yeah. then Vera White. I think is her Vera name. Vera Wang. No. And then, okay. And then, then the other actor with Bing is. Red, no, what's his name? Red Skelton. No, Red it's not Red Scuttler. No, not Red Buttons or whatever. Red Fox. No, I don't think Red Fox. I don't think they would. <laughs> they have, should redo that. They Red wouldn't Fox. allowed Red Fox on the set back then. <laughs> but that's a great movie. I mean, no. and it was actually a remake of a previous movie where Irving Berlin wrote White Christmas for another movie. It was a, before, and it didn't do so well. And I forget what the name of it was. I think it was Holiday Inn or something like that. And so then they came out with another one with Bing Crosby, and that's in one of those movies where everyone sees like the end. Yeah. You don't see any of the lead up. That's kind of unless you watch the movie. I don't think I've seen it. Like, go ahead. I don't think I've seen White Christmas. See it. Um, I don't even know if I even own that one in my my collection. It's a, considered a classic. I mean, it's one of the, like the top movies with the soundtrack, with the actors. I mean, obviously Bing Crosby, the dancing. The weird thing about that movie is is that there's so much in it that is not Christmas related because it starts in the battlefield of World War One or two. And they're coming back, and their general is the guy that they come back, and they learn that he has a lodge that's not doing well because there's no snow in Connecticut or Vermont. Oh, I can't remember. Like a ski lodge? Okay. Yeah, a ski lodge. And so it, and, and then there's all these dance numbers and the singing, and like I said, the White Christmas, big, big uh, play on like um, uh, nightclubs in the what was 1950s. 50, early 51, 50, right after the war. So it would have been like 1950. Okay. But great movie. You should okay. really watch it, actually. So. All right. So that was your number three. What's your three? number three for you? Um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Which one? Are you going to do a Jim cheat Carrey. and put them together? No. I didn't like that Jim Carrey one. So. Uh, and once tried. again, it's, it's back to my childhood. And it's the old Dr. Seuss uh, cartoon. With Boris Karloff. You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. Grinch. The, and they just played that song in the last Hawkeye episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did that. But yeah. he, and that I think that singer is, the, I think, I might be completely wrong, is the guy who plays Lurt. Uh, not the, no. The butler on uh, the Munsters. From the, no, the butler, the tall butler on the Munsters. You think so? I think it might be the Wait, same guy. The, bus, the Munsters didn't have a butler. The Adams family had Lurch. No, no, that lurt. The the monsters had that really tall guy. No, wait, you're wait. No, Where was the me. really deep voice? This is my child. It was the Adams okay, family. Okay, sorry, Adams family. I lurch. think that actor might have been the guy who sang that song, but I'm it, I'm 100 percent not. No, I don't think here. so. I think you're just. Will we hearing, be posting who sang the? I think he's wrong. The Grinch song here. No, I don't I think remember 100. Because I think the guy who actually sung the Grinch song was. Like a famous singer of, of well, that time, so not Lurch. So who narrated it? Another famous person. I don't know. So if I say the Mummy, would you know? Uh, Boris Karloff. Yes. Oh yeah. He ran. He read the entire. He was the voiceover narrator. Oh well, you know we were talking. And, and they were talking about like how did they get him? That one I don't know. It's but it's a kind of a weird story how they got him to actually do that. Nope. But they needed somebody that could have some gravity. Well, uh, just to kind of tie in a cool fact with some of these movies. Remember how we talked about uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town and Rudolph? Remember yeah. who narrated those? It is your good buddy. Burl Ives. Burl Ives. And so, so my story about Burl Ives. No, 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 wait. The battery might die. You uh, can't talk about that. Burl Ives. So. Silver. Was, oh, wait. I silver can't say that. and gold. I can't say that. Silver and. So. When I was a young kid, uh, I was probably about six years old, seven years old, because Star Wars had just come out that summer, and my parents took me on a vacation to Catalina Island. Off, Where's that? It's just off the coast of LA. It's where all the celebs go mm. to kind of you're, get away. You're hobnobbing with some celebs. So we took a boat over to Catalina, and we were in a hotel. And the reason why I remember it was 77 is because I had the 
the the novel Star Wars with me, reading it. It was you the were gold. reading the novel. I told you I read until I was about twelve. So, <laughs> um, so I was reading the novel Star Wars, and we went out for breakfast one morning, mm -hmm. and sitting across by himself. Did he see you reading? By the way, was he no? Like, Look at that astute young child. And the funny thing is, I didn't recognize him, like his face, but my parents did. And they're like, "Oh, do you know who that is? That's Burl Ives." And I'm like. Who's Burl Lives? He's the voice of Santa Claus is coming to town and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And I'm like, look, and I was like, that's him? And he sees that we're talking about this. And he goes, hey, son, would you like to come over and have breakfast with me? And I look at my parents and they're like, yeah, go ahead. So like, I go over and I sit in the booth across from Burl Lives. And like, my parents are over here. And now I'm having lunch or breakfast with Burl Lives. And he was... The nicest man, like, oh, what are you doing here? You know, what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, now. And did he ask, have you seen any of my stuff, my work? Yeah, I was like, you do Santa Claus is coming to town? He's like, oh, yeah, that's me. I was like, that's what my parents said. I love that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so now later on in life, I thought about Burl lives because I don't think he ever got married. And yeah, uh, was he just a nice man story. to have a young boy come sit with him at breakfast? Or was there <laughs> something nefarious going on there? But I don't know. I want to keep... He was trying to tap youth. He was I trying want... to tap into the youth movement. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm just going to keep to a nice, beautiful memory thought that I had. You know? but that is I awesome got... that you get to meet Burl Ives. Uh, I because that meet... guy is, you know, a legend. A legend. Like, millennials won't know who he is today, but... But if he's you the were, snowman who yeah. does all the voice narration, and oh, he kind of yeah. makes an appearance in another movie too. But yeah, but not him. But yeah. So so yeah. Burl Ives. Okay, start. so that was my number three. Have we gotten to your number two yet? No. Let's do number two. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Boom! Boom! Boom. Oh. An okay. anticipated classic. Like yeah. the old days, you looked for this and you scheduled it, but you know, one of those early stop motion with puppets and stuff, but. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fantastic storyline, and there's buried into that whole entire thing is misunderstanding of creatures mm -hmm. because of the abominable snowman, snowman and that he was misunderstood all these years that people were giving him a hard time. But man, were you scared out of your diaper, out of your short pants, whatever, when that guy would show up because he was terrifying. I love it. And then you find out when his teeth are removed by... Herbie, mm -hmm. right? Wasn't Herbie mm -hmm. the kid? Everyone loves him, and he could put the star right on top. Yeah. So oh. I love the sound too that the the nose made. It was like a real. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Very yeah. early, and it, and you heard like maybe ten years ago they they found all of the original puppets. No. Because it's a Japanese company, and they had thrown them out. Japanese company and a secretary said, can I go and can I take those and so she went and took them all out of the dumpsters and kept them in the family so that family had been passing around these original all and they're about this big like Rudolph was probably about this big do the Japanese even celebrate how or Christmas <laughs> I mean I don't really think that's so. another whole other story yeah but if you want to get into it yes no. they do but oh. they celebrate with KFC <laughs> oh, okay. I KFC don't know. Is a huge thing in Japan, but the uh, but yeah no they they and so this was passing around this family for like I don't know what 30, 40 years because I don't remember what, the, the original I think was like 63, 64, somewhere oh, there. Oh no, it's older than that. Rankin and what was the other guy's name? The producer because they, they did all of those. Yeah, but that was the stop motion. I think studio. it's from the fifties. I think it was in the sixties. Really, fifties would have been black and white. This came out in color. But uh, yeah, this family ended up passing it around, and then finally somebody, one of the family members said, you know what, I want to donate this. And so they are now in the Smithsonian after oh. making it around the United States. Oh, that's nice. So fabulous story, fabulous, well-written characters. You're right, 64. Yeah. So? So highly recommend if your children have not seen Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger, but even adults can watch it because it's yeah. entertaining at multiple levels. It's, it's good. And it's Burl Ives is the snowman who goes through and does like a narration of the entire thing. Did I talk about Burl Ives? You did. <laughs> did I talk about it? Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure. <laughs> are you having enough of that? I don't know. These uh, buzz balls are definitely having an effect on memory. Okay, so it's my number two? Yes. All right, it is Christmas Vacation. Uh, yeah. To me, this is one of the funniest movies of all time. 
Chevy Chase. I love Randy Quaid in this. You know what I mean? As the as the brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. Yeah. Empty in his uh, yeah. RV toilet. It's full. <laughs> <laughs> Clark? But, do you remember when they went on those, you know, when you go sledding on those discs? Yeah, right. <laughs> what is his special... The special formula on it to make it more, like... Slippery. Slippery. And they, stick formula. They were, like, burning down the hill. Right. <laughs> There's so many... And then Beverly D'Angelo as the extremely patient and understanding wife who is very in love with her husband and obviously, you know, kind of like very affectionate. Kind of like your wife being patient with us filming all these, right? Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, hon. Yes. But, uh, yeah. And, you know, she's a girlfriend of um, um, the famous actor, not De Niro, the other one with an S. Oh, um, yeah. Mar uh, Al Pacino. Yes. Yes. I don't know Ooh. if they ever got married. Ooh, Al Pacino. Look, uh, welcome to my little whatever he yeah. says, you know. Say hello to my little friends. My little friend. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, another great movie. And, uh, you know, there's a Christmas theme in there. Or yeah. A message at the end. And it's Christmas. Yeah. More so than Die Hard. Come on. <laughs> All right. I don't so, know. number one. Number one. Are you going to help me with this? Did you do your number two? Yes. Yeah. Number, number one. one. All right. Finally. Number one, what's your number one? Elf. They Elf. might be the same, but I don't know. Elf. You think so? Maybe not. I don't know. You're so <laughs> wrong. Look at that face. No. I no, do I, not I, like Elf. Oh, man. You've got some very opinionated I, ways of it, your Christmas movies. We've talked about this before. I'm not the biggest Will Ferrell yeah. guy. Well, this was still, I mean, you know, I agree with you. Will Ferrell does tend to play the Will Ferrell character in everything. And this is the first time I thought he did not do that. He played actually. I, I think I drained my ball here. So. No, no, I see some, I see a little liquid oh. in there. You didn't drain it enough. But the um, what I thought of great about that movie was that they really captured a lot of stuff that is Christmas, like emotionally related with him coming in. and was like, where's Santa? Where's Santa? And the, the funny thing about him being adopted. And then the Game of Thrones guy is in there. Uh, Oh, uh, Tyrion Lannister. Tanner, Tyrion Lannister. He's oh, in yeah. there. He's very prominent, and he's the, and the well, although ironically, because he's obviously very more of a dour type of character. Peter he, Dinklage. Yes, Peter Dinklage. He plays the young children's author, like the celebrated young children's author. Oh, and, James, uh, James Caan is in this too. Yeah, right? James Caan, another weird uh, actor to be putting into this type of movie. Yeah. Yeah. But then, and then Zoe Deschanel makes her like singing debut in this movie. Oh. And she's a blonde, by the way. Oh. And so she plays one of the store elves. And then this is one of those movies that I tear up on at the very end when Santa actually makes an appearance and everyone like, emo you know, just suddenly realizes that he's real. Which sounds like you mean, probably didn't see the movie, but that's no, I've like seen one the movie, of the ending. But I've only seen it like once. Oh yeah, no, that one I actually tear up on when he does a <coughs> huge giant swoop off into the uh, over everyone's head off of uh, Central Park in New York. It's a very powerful scene. So hmm. I thought they did a great job with that movie. So go ahead, what's your one? Man, that just did not make my top eight. <laughs> that's just what are you gonna tell me, Bad Santa? Well, obviously, mine didn't make your top eight either. So. Batman Returns? No, I'm going to go with number one for me is Scrooge. Which? And so I'm going to go with the 1970 Albert mm. Finney Scrooge. Well, that's a Christmas carol, technically. That's called Scrooge. Was it called Scrooge? It's called Scrooge. And so... Oh, that's right. He did a special one, yeah. It's the musical version of Scrooge. So, like, did you ever watch, like, the old Oliver Twist? That was the musical. Please, sir, may I have some more? Yeah. And then, so what? this was... More? From 1970, and the I think the reason why this is in my top, well, it's your number one, and my number one, is because I had the coolest fifth grade teacher ever, and she used to take us out for movies of the whole class. Like she took us to see Lord of the Rings, like in the Which movie was theater. Which probably a cartoon. The at cartoon. That point. The yeah. cartoon. Right. Yeah, and she took us to see. I, I can't remember what else she. But she took she us took out you to the movie theater. To the movie theater. We were even allowed to do. We that had to back get. Then? We had to get passes signed by our parents. Like. That, that allowed us to go off campus and then she had a bus come and take us to the movie theaters and at like one o'clock we would see a movie we'd be back by like 
three o'clock or 11 o'clock or something like that. That sounds like a great teacher. <laughs> she was the best teacher. She was the best teacher. And um, she, in, in fact, you know what she did? She read Bram Stoker's Dracula to us. We were in fifth grade. She read it to us every day. We would take an hour out of the day and we would go over to this room where she had thrown a bunch Did of you carpets. Have like one out. teacher all day long? And yeah. She, oh, okay. This yeah. is a different situation. <laughs> I didn't have the multiple classes until yeah. sixth grade. Uh. So in fifth grade, she would have a, an area in the, the classroom where she threw down a bunch of carpets and a bunch of pillows, and we would all go, and she would turn off the lights in the class wow. and read by flashlight <laughs> Dracula God. by Bram Stoker every day mm -hmm. for an hour until we finished that book. Wow. Trust me, it was, it was amazing. So she took us to this Scrooge. And so I remember, you know, we all had, you know, asked for our parents to give us money. We all had popcorn. We were all, the theater was just our class that day. It was like in the after, in the, in the morning, mm -hmm. afternoon, and it was just our class. And we got to watch Scrooge and they were singing and, you know, um, you know, he's seen the ghosts, and the ghosts were scary. Right. You know, ghost of Christmas past, ghost of Christmas present. future, ghost of Christmas present. And so for me, now there's been a lot of Christmas carols. There's been like Scrooge with with Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. There That's was what I thought you were referencing. There was a Patrick Stewart Christmas Carol. There was the original one from 1958. Alistair yeah, Alistair, what's his name? There was the Muppet Christmas Carol, but for me Jim Carrey. Yeah, there was the Jim Carrey. So for me, the Scrooge that I like is Albert Finney, 1970. If you haven't seen it, go see it. And it just, that's Christmas to me. So. And it's not in black and white, obviously. No, it was 70, in color. So. It was I'm in sure color. I've seen that one. I mean, so there's, it, it's more like a so musical? So it's a musical, yeah. Okay. So like, you know, like they'll well, go from segment to segment and have a musical about stuff. Uh -huh. Like the ghost like will sing the hymn. Yeah, yeah, they're like Oliver and all those other movies. So you didn't right? think I was a song and dance man, did I you? I did not think you were a song and dance man. Uh, You're but I loved all it. over it. I'm all over it. <laughs> Mary, a shuffle toe, Mary Poppins, toe. my number one Disney movie. I know. Now Scrooge, the musical. Man, and when am I going to see this other side of you I've never I seen it before? I know. So there you have it. The Cult Lord's top eight Christmas movies of all time. Of all time. Of all time. But I bet, I bet your top eight will be very, very different than ours, right? <laughs> because there is a lot of Christmas movies that we left out. I'd like to see you go list your top eight Christmas movies. Please do that. List them. That'll get you in the drawing for mm -hmm. a copy of old. But then there might be some Christmas movies I've never heard of that I need to go see. And it'll all be because of you mentioning it in our in Don't our comments. Go. Don't yeah. you drained your balls there. Yeah, so good thing. all right. So go to this uh, the comments, comment on it, and subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And now that we're out of eggnog, we're back to wine. All right, we're back to wine. And, and our we next can, segment we can, will be coming up in a few days. And we'll cheer everybody a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Joyeux Noël in French.